Hello friends, I am Dr. Satyanarayana Mysore from Manipal Hospital, Old Airport Road. I am the head of pulmonology and sleep medicine. This is an educational series and I represent the common man and I ask your questions to some of our experts. So, I am very much delighted to welcome Dr. Reddy Prasad Yadavalli. In uh, my opinion and in patient's opinion, he is one of those leading internationally acclaimed experts in the field of interventional radiology. Welcome Dr. Reddy Prasad. Thank you Dr. Satya. So, tell me for long, common man was kind of used to radiology and that would be diagnostic radiology which means the radiologist by using an x-ray or a CT scan or an MRI is basically getting our shadow onto a photo plate or a monitor and diagnose the problems. Interventional radiology is a game changer in many ways but what exactly is interventional radiology? Thank you for that. Taking on the point that you mentioned about the CT scans, MRI scans, ultrasound and X-rays. Utilizing all these modalities, most commonly X-rays and ultrasound. In the last four decades or so, particularly starting in the Western world, interventional radiology as a super speciality has evolved. What we do in a layman's language is advanced pinhole procedures which means there is no cutting, there is no large incisions or no large scars. Utilizing a very fine pinhole, mm -hmm. we introduce catheters and guide wires and perform procedures, which we can say in surgery, it has evolved over a period of time and minimally invasive such as keyhole, which is laparoscopic surgery, and then much smaller scar, which is a robotic surgery we make scars which is much smaller which is pinhole and perform a variety of procedures from head to toe involving the blood vessels involving the kidney ureter bladder liver gynecology ureters legs blood supply every part of the body we can get into and perform these procedures so i think our uh, friends would be used to if somebody is coughing up large volume of blood in the ester years they would have had a CT just to make out which portion of the lung is the culprit one and they would get operated and basically you take that portion of the lung out. Now using interventional radiology, what do you do? How do you save our patient? Thankfully, with the advent of interventional radiology, we can save the lung. We can save the patient a surgery through this pinhole getting through a artery or blood vessel in the leg or the hand. We enter the blood vessels utilizing a catheter and perform an angiogram. What conventionally a cardiologist performs to, for the heart, we perform the similar angiograms for all the organs in the body, rest of the body. So we perform angiogram of the lungs, identify the abnormal blood vessels, which on a previous CT scan we would have identified, confirm those abnormalities on the angiography and block those blood vessels. Lung has more than one blood supply. By blocking these blood vessels, we are able to stop the leakage of the blood into the lungs, which they don't cough out eventually. And lungs do not get affected in any way by this procedure. And you and I have managed these patients over the last decade or so. True. And I would say we have probably some of the largest numbers of managing these patients. And the patients tend to go home within a day or so. Which know. is fantastic. It's a game changer. Absolutely. Now, off late, your uh, field of interest, I would say, is also actively into interventional radiology in gynecology work and yeah. fertility and the gynecology. Isn't that amazing? So, can you take me through what are the gynecological or fertility related procedures that you do? Yeah. And compared to the traditional laparoscopic method or hystero selfingography, what is it that you do? I'll take a step back. When I was training and working in the UK, one of my research projects was on fibroid embolization. With regard to obstetrics and gynecology, we manage in addition to, in conjunction with the OBG team, 
we manage patients with fibroids adenomyosis infertility high risk obstetrics which includes postpartum hemorrhage you know placenta previa a variety of situations coming to fibroids which are very very common probably 1 in 3 to 1 in 4 women can develop fibroid during the reproductive age group patients who have symptoms we do a procedure called embolization which is getting into the uterine artery again through a pinhole procedure and blocking the blood supply that to is the fibroid to the fibroids both so sides you to the spare uterus. surgery we spare surgery it's you an spare uh, hysterectomies you spare uh, myomectomy which means uh, cutting open the layers of the uterus just taking the fibroid out but leaving a scar which can come in the way of further fertility and it is the morbidity of the surgery the suffering one has to go through so essentially all that is taken care by simply going through the blood vessels block the blood supply to the culprit portion of the uterus the overgrown soft muscle and then uh, they are back on feet so in manipal hospital old airport road we are the first in india to open a fibroid clinic when the patient walks in with the problem of fibroid both gynecologist sees the patient interventional radiologist sees the patient explains both the treatment options and amongst the three we decide whatever is the best for the patient so the patients get to choose what treatment they want that is on always an advantage and we offer all under one roof so apart from your long stay in scotland uk and other things you also did uh, make few trips to italy to hon skills and perfection of prostate embolization yeah so i do see a lot of uh, patients with lung problems who probably are not fit for any kind of a surgery for the prostate mm. and they are left socially very embarrassed with uh, urine dribbling incontinence a uh, lot of fear quality of life comes down or they have to be honestly on a catheter yeah for longer period of time so do you do embolize the prostate as well as well yeah yes prostate in medical terms we can say is a man's fibroid all like right i have explained right. about fibroid right. embolization we work in conjunction with our urology team here in manipal hospital and this is another minimally invasive procedure the indications are various either it is a elderly patient who is not fit for surgery and they have got a indwelling catheter or it is a relatively young patient who is in their late 50s and somehow don't want to go for a major surgery in they the future have, or the right surgery now, is required at that point of time surgery might be required at this point of time but they are not keen for surgery and after they have seen the urologist they are sent to us we discuss about this procedure these prostate arteries are small arteries medical technology has advanced so much that the catheters that we use are less than a millimeter size and the particles that we use for embolization are in microns you know you keep the particles one side by side you can fit 10 particles within a millimeter and we've got the best cath lab equipment here in our in hospital in manipal old airport road in manipal old airport road utilizing all this equipment and the advanced medical technology and the catheters we are able to block the blood supply to only the prostate gland over a period of time the prostate gland shrinks in size and the patient's symptoms improve so there are definitely patients who have gotten better in the younger age group which is in the late 50s to 60s and those patients who had a indwelling catheter 6 weeks 4 to 6 weeks down the line we are able to remove the catheter and patient is able to pass urine no that is really amazing we would wish all patients are fit for the traditional vigorous surgical process or the new thing of the moment that is the robotic uh, prostatectomy turp and other things but in case somebody is not there is hope in form of prostate embolization there is a definite hope with this minimally invasive techniques and the patient gets discharged the next day and do you do also lot of uh, kidney related work yeah india has an ever growing and increasing population with diabetes hypertension and kidney problems more and more patients are getting renal tra- transplants but on their journey from the time of the kidney failure before they find a kidney the patient needs dialysis right from the word go from the time they start requiring dialysis interventional radiologists can place a temporary dialysis line through their neck that is the 
simplest of the procedure while they are waiting for their fistula to be created which is an ideal form let us say there is a what we call failing fistula a surgeon has created a fistula and the flows are not good we do angiography which is called fistulogram again in the same cath lab and angioplasty opening up the blood vessel thereby improving the blood flow that is the simplest of the interventional radiology procedure so it is not only line. saving the fistula but prevent patient from uh, getting into another surgery another yes. uh, kind of uh, this it's amazing good yeah. good so the next step after the fistula saving the fistula is a lot of the patients who have these central lines for dialysis they come with complete blockage of these veins here in our manipal hospital old airport road we have the best expertise i would say to open up those complex veins the surgeons cannot open them up there are some procedures which only interventional radiologists can do opening up the central veins which is our expertise with again with advanced medical technology utilizing our cath lab and our expertise. so you are referring to the big great veins of the neck right. uh, Correct. which essentially go into the right side of the heart yes taking away all the impure blood absolutely so they become tighter because of a long term dialysis line catheter yeah. yeah and you are good in salvaging that yeah which can't be of course operated it can't be operated yes. and there will be more morbidity and they can't by putting the grafts and all that one more as a life saving procedure as a last option what we have also done is placing a dialysis catheter as a last stage option as a life saving procedure through the liver you know these are few mm. and far between not done in many that places that is not imaginable yeah. yes yeah yeah good and uh, you have done procedures on uh, neonates as well yeah recently born one yeah so in interventional radiology there is a further sub specialty called pediatric interventions or neonatal interventions very few people have that expertise a story to share in fact the parents recently shared a photograph of the baby who has grown up and now close to 3 years hmm. the father walked in one fine evening the child was not doing well and not able to feed take the feeds and the child was diagnosed with some mass or a swelling which is a problem with the blood vessels within the liver he was lost he has gone from pillar to post not knowing what to do one fine evening he was referred to us and we reviewed the scans immediately we got the child shifted to our hospital next morning we did performed the procedure where again we did the angiogram of the liver the baby is so small less than my forearm and the catheters that we have usually are adult oriented but you need to be so careful with our finesse we enter the liver arteries with utilizing these catheters under x-ray guidance perform the angiogram and only block those abnormal blood vessels that is again called embolization of a arteriovenous malformation immediately within a week or two the child got better performed better and recently they updated that the child is absolutely normal there is another segment of interventional radiology called interventional oncology cancer is growing so much right not just in india throughout the world for a variety of reasons now interventional radiology which is interventional oncology is considered as the fourth pillar of oncology surgical oncology medical oncology radiation oncology and the fourth pillar of oncology is interventional is oncology. interventional oncology throughout the journey of the patient right from the time of diagnosis or even before diagnosis we aid to the diagnosis and even in the advanced cancer care throughout the journey interventional oncologists i am an interventional oncologist we are involved in their care so it's very important to educate the population about this as well kudos yeah so thank you for enlightening our uh, viewers the yeah. common man in the question to this new and exciting branch yeah. which is kind of uh, avoid surgery instant access tiny access leave no scars yeah. but the impact is yeah. life changing yeah thank you dr reddy thank for you, your dr. valuable Sathya. time thank you